Well, let's go to the United States, where an investigation is underway into a major intelligence leak of top-secret documents which show the Israeli military preparations for a strike on Iran. Joining me is the Australian's foreign affairs editor, Greg Sheridan. Greg, uh, the leak is apparently from images generated by American reconnaissance satellites and other intelligence. What does it show and just how serious is this leak? Well, James, look, it's not the end of the world, but it's a, it's a pretty serious matter. It's very bad by the Americans, very poor form. I think both the Americans and the Israelis are mismanaging the way that Israel is going to respond to Iran. I mean, all the military urgency is coming out of this as they have this kind of kabuki theatre about what the Americans will allow the Israelis to do. And they're sort of inviting Iran to wage a political campaign to say, no, can't touch our nuclear facilities, can't touch our oil facilities. And just to add an ever-growing list, uh, and America seems to be acting on Iran's behalf here to limit what Israel can do. Meanwhile, they're publishing it all in the media via the normal Washington leaks. You would really think the Biden administration might find a way to have a, a confidential dialogue with the Netanyahu government about this. I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't really compromise anything, but it's um, uh, it's it's pretty unsatisfactory. Before I let you go, uh, former UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson says France should be brought into the AUKUS pact. What do you think about that suggestion? Oh, I think Boris is just blowing smoke. You know, he's doing um, doing media interviews now for his book. So I am very dubious about whether AUKUS is going to add up to a hill of beans anyway. The, the purpose of AUKUS is for Australia to get nuclear-powered submarines. Well, the French have got nothing to do with that. We're talking about bringing everyone into Pillar 2 of AUKUS. Japan would be a strong candidate, obviously. But so far, Pillar 2 has amounted to nothing. I mean, AUKUS has been going for three and a half years or whatever it is. It hasn't delivered a single weapon into the Australian line of battle. And, you know, James, if they get submarines in the life of my grandchildren, I will be surprised. Maybe your grandchildren will, will see them. But um, uh, I, I think really this is sort of nonsensical talk from Johnson and uh, AUKUS is in a kind of a land of make-believe at the moment. It's um, it's very dubious. I'm all in favour of nuclear submarines. I'm a thousand percent in favour of them. But what, what has happened is the Albanese government and so far the opposition and the Liberals when they were in government have used AUKUS as an excuse to do absolutely nothing else in our, in our defence force. So we have an unbelievably feeble defence force, which we never discuss, and we discuss AUKUS all the time and nothing is actually happening. It's, it's kind of make-believe quality to so much of our politics. And uh, AUKUS is like that. It's like discussing Alice in Wonderland or Dorothy and the Rainbow or something. You know, it's, uh, it's fun, but it doesn't amount to anything. Well, Greg, you say we may end up with nuclear subs for my grandchildren. Have we got that much time? No, of course not. We, so... Here's the fatal contradiction, James. Every strategic document says we're in the worst strategic circumstances we've been in since World War II. The Albanese government has proclaimed this, minister after minister. The Liberals were no better. Scott Morrison and Peter Dutton were always talking about the possibility of war with China, that we might have to go to war with China. Meanwhile, we have no weapons. Anthony Albanese, in an interview with me, said we're very derelict in missile defence. This is when he first became Prime Minister. Now they've decided not to do missile defence for any of our air bases in the north. Our ships are, are, are so ancient, so decrepit, they, they need the RACB or the NRMA to come and help them every time they go to sea. We're not going ahead with a final squadron of uh, F-35s. So the, the government has taken AUKUS as a licence to do nothing else. So all the things we could have in our defence force, we don't have. And we're spending all the money on submarines, which we're never going to get. Final example, James, we're almost the only military in the world which, you know, spends as much money as we do, which doesn't have a drone. We see how dominant drones are in the Ukrainian conflict and how important they are in all maritime conflicts. The Ukrainians are sinking the Russian fleet with drones. Our Australian Defence Force doesn't have a drone, even though we make drones for, for the Ukrainians, but we don't have one ourselves. But yet we have a fantasy that we're going to get nuclear submarines in 10 or 20 or 30 or 50 or 100 years' time, 
and that's somehow or other meant to take care of our defence. And I tell you what, by the time we get nuclear submarines, either we'll all be speaking Mandarin or China will be ruled by the Christian Democratic Party. Uh, it'll it'll be long after all of this uh, all of this is resolved one way or the other. Greg, I've got to go, but I, I need to just ask you one more question. You said that both Labor and the Liberal Party are responsible for this inertia when it comes to providing us with suitable defence. Just very quickly, what's the reason for it? If they say the threat is real and yet do nothing, how does that add up? What's the reason? I think there are two main reasons. The first is that they don't want to spend the money. So any country in the world, in all of history, whichever country has gone for nuclear submarines, has to increase their defence budget massively because nuclear submarines are so expensive. So if you're going to go for nuclear submarines, you've got to increase your defence budget. The Albanese government hasn't increased our defence budget at all. And the Morrison government barely spent a dollar on defence. We're still just at or below the 2% threshold. and We're one of the highest cost countries in the world, so we get almost nothing for our dollars. But then secondly, our defence force has never thought of defending Australia. It just exists to, to perform niche operations within an American task force. And I think this is a, a crippling, terrible syndrome in the Australian Defence Force. And our politicians have been so weak and so um, fly by night. You know, how many defence ministers have we had in the last 15 years? We had, what was it, uh, six or, or, or more under the coalition government? We had six before that under Rudd, Gillard, Rudd. And no politician has ever taken control of defence we haven't had a proper defence minister really since John Howard was prime minister. And so they've let the bureaucrats and the defence forces run. And they, what they do is they get very, very high-tech gizmos in tiny quantities, which allow them to be part of a United States task force. The last thing in the world they want to do is have a whole lot of boring stuff to defend Australia. Hezbollah has 200,000 missiles. We're lucky if we've got 200. And as I say, we don't have a single drone. And you know, Richard Miles, I mean, he, he talks in private like Dick Cheney, but he governs like Bernie Sanders. You know, we've, we've just got nothing out of this government, but I, I don't want to make a political point out of it because we got nothing out of the previous government. Tony Abbott was going to give us Japanese subs. That would have been a good idea. Then Malcolm Turnbull went for French subs. OK, well, at least they're, they're something. And then Morrison scrapped them to, went for the, to go for the AUKUS subs. But the AUKUS subs are going to come in Star Trek time. In the meantime... We have nothing. And that's that's how we entered World War II. You know, we had subs in World War I. We didn't have them in World War II. And I think whatever conflict might come, we probably won't have subs uh, when the next conflict comes. Greg Sheridan, you have thoroughly depressed me. Thanks for your time tonight.